Have you ever wondered about the fate of the man who played a key role in one of the most significant events in human history, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ? Picture this. Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor whose name resonates through time due to his monumental decision, a man cloaked in controversy and shrouded in enigma. What became of him after he washed his hands of Jesus' fate? Stay tuned as we unravel the mysterious and tragic end of Pontius Pilate. Before we delve into his demise it's crucial to understand who Pontius Pilate was. Pilate, a figure etched into history and religious texts was not just a name, but a man of power and influence. He was the Roman governor of Judea, a position of prestige and authority during the reign of Emperor Tiberius. His rule however was not without controversy. It was under his watch that the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, a moment that has shaped the course of history, took place. Pilate's role in this event is often debated among historians and theologians alike. Was he a reluctant participant, pushed by the demands of the crowd, or did he willingly take part in the act? Regardless of the answer, this event marked a significant turning point in Pilate's life and career. After the crucifixion, Pilate's life took a turn for the worse, leading to his untimely demise. The aftermath of Jesus' crucifixion marked the beginning of Pilate's downfall. A cascade of events much like tumbling dominoes began to unfold, each one pushing Pilate closer to his inevitable end. In the wake of the crucifixion, public unrest surged like a tempest. The people were not silent, the streets of Jerusalem echoed with the uproar of discontent, the air thick with the tension of a populace on the brink of revolt. Pilate, in his role as governor, was tasked with maintaining order, but his attempts to quell the unrest were as fruitless as trying to hold back the sea with a sieve. His heavy-handed approach, intended to suppress the revolt, only fanned the flames of rebellion. Each act of oppression, each decree, each display of Roman force was met with fierce resistance. The city was a powder keg, and Pilate, with his unyielding stance, was the spark that threatened to ignite it. Back in Rome, word of the turbulence reached the ears of the Emperor Caligula. Disquiet began to stir in the heart of the empire. Rome could not afford to lose control of Jerusalem, a crucial linchpin in their expansive territory. Pilate's failure to maintain order was unacceptable. In a decisive move Caligula recalled Pilate to Rome. It was a command, a summons that could not be ignored or delayed. Pilate was forced to leave Jerusalem the city he had been entrusted to govern, and return to the capital. It was a journey fraught with uncertainty and dread, for it was clear that the emperor's wrath awaited him. Pilate, once a figure of authority and power, now found himself in a perilous position. He had fallen from favor, his reputation tarnished. His failure had not only cost him his position but also set him on a path that would lead to his tragic end. In Rome, Pilate faced the wrath of Emperor Caligula, marking the start of his tragic end. His story serves as a reminder that power when mishandled, can lead to one's downfall. Back in Rome the once powerful governor found himself in the crosshairs of the Roman Emperor. After his tumultuous tenure in Judea, Pontius Pilate was recalled to the heart of the empire. It was a journey of irony. The man who once held the power to judge, now stood judged himself. Emperor Caligula, known for his eccentricities and brutal reign, wasn't one to show mercy to those who fell from his favor. Pilate was no exception. Accused of harsh governance and the alleged mishandling of a Samaritan uprising, Pilate was put on trial. The once mighty governor was stripped of his power, his authority and his dignity. Yet the worst was yet to come. The trial was a spectacle, a dramatic display of Roman justice and imperial power. Pilate was found guilty. The punishment? Banishment. Exiled from the heart of civilization, Pilate was sent to Gaul, a region known today as France. It was a far cry from the grandeur of Rome and the tumultuous yet significant Judea. In Gaul, Pilate was a stranger in a strange land, stripped of his previous life's glories. His downfall was tragic, a stark contrast to the power he once wielded. But it was the solitude of his exile that echoed the loudest in the chambers of his heart. He was alone, left with the weight of his decisions, and the shadow of a man he once was. His choices, his actions, his verdicts, all came back to haunt him in the silence of the Gaulish wilderness. And then, at the end of his tether, Pilate made a decision. A final verdict if you will. Unable to bear the weight of his actions and the desolation of his exile, Pilate chose to end his life. He committed suicide, a tragic end for a man who was once a key player in the grand stage of history. In his last breath, Pilate became a symbol of irony. The man who judged Jesus, the figurehead of a religion based on hope and redemption, lost hope in his own redemption. 
His suicide marked the end of a chapter, the fall of a man who was a crucial cog in the wheel of history. Pilate's death was his final judgment, a sentence passed not by the courts of Rome but by the court of his own conscience. His life filled with power, authority and judgment, ended in solitude, regret and despair. His death was a stark reminder of the power of choices, the weight of decisions, and the inevitable judgment that we all face at the hands of our actions. Thus, ended the life of the man who played a pivotal role in an event that changed the course of human history. Pontius Pilate's death did not mark the end of his story. Indeed his name lived on, becoming a subject of fascination and controversy in the annals of history, art and literature. His legacy is an intricate tapestry woven through the centuries, bearing the marks of the man who was forever tied to one of the most significant events in Christian history. In the aftermath of his death, legends sprouted like wildflowers. Some tales painted him as a tormented soul, doomed to wash his hands in a vain attempt to cleanse himself of guilt for all eternity. Other stories, particularly in Eastern Orthodox and Ethiopian traditions, went so far as to canonize him as a saint, casting him in a light of redemption and forgiveness. In the realm of art, Pilate's portrayal has been varied and complex. Renaissance painters often depicted him as a conflicted figure, torn between his duty as a Roman governor and his moral qualms about condemning an innocent man. In literature too he has been a subject of enduring fascination. From the pages of Mikhail Bulgakov's The Master and Margarita, to the verses of Bob Dylan's Desolation Row, Pilate has been explored, examined and reimagined in countless ways. His legacy however is a complex one. For many he remains the embodiment of a villain, the man who washed his hands off responsibility and condemned Jesus to death. But on the flip side, there are those who view him as a man trapped by circumstances, a pawn in a larger game of power and religion. In the end, Pilate's story is a testament to the power of perspective. He is a villain and a victim, a tormentor and a tormented, a man of power and a man of weakness. His tale is as multifaceted as the interpretations of his character, making him a figure of enduring fascination. While his role in Jesus' crucifixion branded him a villain for many, others view him as a man trapped by circumstances making Pontius Pilate a figure of enduring fascination. So, what have we learned about the tragic end of Pontius Pilate? We have journeyed through the life of Pilate, delving into the depths of his existence after the crucifixion of Jesus. We've seen the man behind the name, the Roman governor who was more than just a figurehead in one of history's most pivotal moments. From his days of power to his downfall, Pilate's life was far from ordinary. Following Jesus' crucifixion, Pilate's life took a downward spiral. His trial, a spectacle of political maneuvering and personal torment, showed us the man beneath the governor's mask. The trial, filled with accusations and defenses, ended tragically for Pilate. His death, a violent and terrible end, was a stark contrast to the authority and power he once wielded. And then, we explored his legacy. Pilate, despite his actions, left a mark on history that has endured for over 2,000 years. His name, forever linked to the crucifixion of Jesus, has been etched into the annals of history. His story, a tragic tale of power, guilt, and downfall, continues to fascinate and intrigue us today. In the end, Pontius Pilate was a man caught in the crossfire of history, a pawn in a game of power and religion. His life, his choices, and his tragic end serve as a poignant reminder of the human element in historical events. And that, my friends, is the tragic tale of Pontius Pilate, the man who condemned Jesus to the cross.